Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and it is time to jump on another contest. Um, this is Fran Common Powler. He is uh, hit 300, or he was doing a contest because, yeah, because he passed over 300. Um, he's actually, when I looked, I think he's really getting closer to 400 now. But anyway, uh, I'll be a link below for the video that you can jump on this contest. Actually, if you do it fast, because it ends tomorrow, March 4th. So I'm coming in pretty close to the deadline here. But anyway, uh, the contest itself, real quick, it's got 13 questions. A baker's dozen, in other words. Um, and so we are going to jump right into this. He wants to see 13 different albums. I believe I have them all covered. It can be any format. I stuck mostly to uh, vinyl records with the exception of one. So anyway, let's get right into this. And so we got uh, number one is shows an album with the mammal on it. This is one I showed not too terribly long ago because I picked it up not too terribly long ago. This is Luis Cardenas, Animal Instinct. Got a big tiger on there. If you know anything about this guy, this release, this whole drum set. Got like a 70-something piece drum set, huge drum set. MTV video back in the day from this album. But uh, all of it, Tiger Stripes. So there you go. That's what that's about. Number two, an album with food. We got this cute little innocent girl biting an apple on a Saxon album. So lots of food out there, but this was the uh, one that came to mind, and so I jumped on that. Saxon's innocence is no excuse. Number three is one with terrible hair. Now he pulled an 80s, you know, <laughs> 80s crazy hair from the 80s uh, type stuff. But here you go, let's try this. Marty Friedman's Tokyo uh, jukebox number three. I mean, look at that hair, come on. It looks messy, it's crazy. Of course, that's my modern styling right there. That's probably that'd probably be great in places. So who knows? Number four, a single-sided album. We got Paul Bearer, uh, the uh, 2010 demo. They put this out, and it is an album with the demo on one side, and you're not going to be able to see it. It's actually etched on the other side. So anyway, there you go, single-sided with an etching on the other side as we go. Uh, number five, a damaged sleeve. I showed one of these the other day with that uh, Pantera I got, but this one's a little worse. This is another one of those uh, scratch and dent sales from Amazon I bought a couple years ago, but you can see it's got a big, uh, this is Dream Theater, it's got a big bend there all the way down the side of the cover there, and you can see it's actually got a tear out of the cover there so yeah that's probably one of the more damaged albums that are fairly new i mean obviously i've got albums from the 70s that are all beat up but that's the uh, fairly recent one that's got some damage to it number six an album with a weapon eh, got so many swords and guns and all that i went with something a little more obscure <laughs> with some childlike art evil never sleeps by phantom lord it's hard to see because of all the craziness, but he's got a sword there that he's chopping the head off. So anyway, violence, blood, weapons. Number seven had a lot of different, different options. Show a six, what do he show? Uh, a five, six, eight, nine, or 10 inch album. Now, honestly, I've never heard of anything but 10 inches. He, all the ones he showed for the other options looked like they were from overseas. So I've never seen one like that. So that's cool. So I had to go with 10 inch. And I've got a lot of those. So this is one for mortification. Thing neat about this one, um, it's a song from each of two different albums, Scrolls of the Megalop. And Anyway, the thing was, when these albums uh, were originally released on CD, they were really long. When they came out on vinyl, didn't all fit on the vinyl records. This song, which is really long, and this song, which is really long, one from each album, they put them out as a 10-inch. So now you have the entire entirety of both albums on vinyl, but the 10 inch has these extremely long songs from each of the albums. So that was that was cool. I'm glad they did that. I've got some albums that have been reissued from albums that were too long on CD where they just cut the tracks. And I'm a completist and I hate that. So, you know, it's nice when they find some other alternative. Uh, I know doing a double album set sometimes is kind of tough, but and maybe not even too much then, but they should find some other way. 10 inches are nice like that. So um, anyway, number eight. A vehicle, but not a car or a motorcycle. How about a spaceship? Michael Shanker's Universal. He's flying a spaceship, playing his guitar. There you go. Spaceship is a vehicle, if you believe in flying through space there. Um, anyway, 
Uh, number nine is a misleading cover. Now, I thought, man, there's probably a lot of these because you I, I buy a lot of records. Sometimes I take a chance based on the covers. And, you know, but none of them really stood out much except for this one. And I'm people probably don't even know what this is. But Cruise 2, look at this. It's got molten metal and it's got the logo. And everything about it screams like this is going to be a molten metal album. But nope. Straight up pop slash gospel slash uh, very, very non-rock. Anyway, I thought that was a little bit crazy there. Uh, then number 10, a, uh, no, that was number 10. Number 11, a crime happening. Um, this, okay, Adam Ant stand and deliver. This, you kind of almost have, you can see he's got guns, he's got a, a stagecoach. And if you know the video for this album back in the 80s, he's holding up the stagecoach. The song itself talks about, you know, your money or your life. Whereas the whole song itself is more about fashion and music. And anyway, um, you know, it talks about robbery and stuff like that. But anyway, so the idea is, you know, he's holding up a stagecoach. It's a stagecoach robbery. He's a pirate. There you go. Number 12 is a local band. This is Bat. They have two EPs out and some other material out there. They're from about an hour up the road, Richmond, Virginia. Um, there are a lot of obviously smaller local bands in my direct area within, you know, 20 minutes of me, but nothing that I have on vinyl. They're just mainly bands that have recorded CDs on their own. I mean, my band is, I've been in two bands that have CDs out there. So I went with the vinyl. This is, uh, this band's pretty big. They, uh, tour and so here you go the other band that's really big from this area that i have no vinyl from is at war they literally play the local clubs around here at times but they've been around for since the 80s and they're still active now and they tour over but i don't have any of their albums sadly i want some but yeah they're you know they are literally even more local but i have nothing by them and then a uh, number 13 is a somebody with somebody that's passed away now that's pretty easy, but I went with Riot Restless Breed. This is the Rhett Forster years. One of my favorite singers, one of my favorite, just I love the era when he was in the band and it saddened me many years ago, it was in the 90s I believe, where he was shot and, and, it, it, and he passed away. Now since, you know, since then, the original singer that Rhett Forster replaced, Guy, who played on the first handful of albums he passed away of, of cancer so you know it's it's happening but this was kind of a tragic story that really stuck with me because i really dug him and his style and his vocals and then he was taken too early with a like a robbery i believe it was so the one i did miss i'm sorry that's why i skipped number 10 backing up to number 10 is a weird pairing and this the reason i did is because this was a cd not in that stack number 10 a weird pairing artists or 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 or, or music or that doesn't go together now this may be stretching it but it, it kind of came to mind this is ted kirkpatrick's ode to a roadkill ted plays guitar and drums and everything all the vocals on this album are animal sounds <laughs> so it is like stoner rock sounds guitar and stuff like that but then all the the audio vocals come from real wildlife sounds so you've got the singing and everything singing and everything is from animals so um, while it may not be two artists pairing it is singer is something that you would not expect on a regular album because it's animals and then you got this metal stoner rock underneath it so hopefully that's good enough to qualify and that'll be it check out the video for the for the contest jump on it real quick if you want and we will see you later. Rock on and rock hard.